Okay, so I can't believe someone thought that this title would work because it's one of the dumbest titles in movie history. But in order for me to continue with this review, I've got to say it. So today, I'm going to review... A.K.A. Snake. is a 1973 horror sci-fi movie starring Struther Martin, Dirk Benedict, and Heather Menzies. The film was directed by Bernard L. Kowalski, director of Night of the Blood Beast and Attack of the Giant Leeches, as well as episodes of Magnum P.I., Jake the Fat Man, and Rawhide. This is a step down, dude. The plot focuses on Dr. Carl Stoner, a herpetologist and owner of a snake ranch. He hires one of his students, David, as a handler and starts giving him injections. Stoner tells David that the injections build immunity to snake bites, but David starts exhibiting the characteristics of a cobra, peeling skin, biting, etc. But not only that, he loses weight and feels cold, but Stoner tells him it's just a symptom of the immunity injections. Meanwhile, David starts a relationship with Stoner's daughter, Christine, but Stoner doesn't want any of this and makes his objections clear by almost saying that David's poisoned blood could kill her. <laughs> it's around this time Stoner starts losing it. After a creepy jock sneaks into his daughter's room and kills his beloved pet snake, Harry, Stoner kills the jock with a black mamba. Not only that, when a fellow colleague of Stoner's, Dr. Daniels, sees what is happening to David, Stoner chains him in the basement and pulls a stunt reminiscent of Jigsaw. He puts a key into one of two cages. One cage has a venomous snake and the other a harmless snake. Daniels is able to get the key, but then is killed by Stoner's python. But why is Stoner doing all of this and why is he turning David into a snake? And why does he want anyone to know about it? Well, obviously Stoner has a thing for snakes. And it's because Stoner believes that humanity is doomed and thinks that snakes are the next step in human evolution that will enable them to survive ecological disasters. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> You're saying that the next step in human evolution and in order to survive ecological disasters is to become intelligent snakes. Take it away, George Takei. You are made of stupid. And that is the biggest problem with this movie. The fact that they take this idea way too seriously. I mean, looking at the cover and even the trailer, the idea seems as if it's a scenario where a scientist creates a snake from a man and uses it to kill on his behalf. But no! In fact, for this horror movie, there isn't a whole lot of horror. Just people walking around and discussing snakes scientifically. The only time the snake men appear, that's right, there are two, nobody dies. The first time we see a snake man, it's one of Stoner's failures, which he sold to a freak show. The snake man was played by a real-life triple amputee, and seeing him wobbling and moaning in pain is pretty unnerving, probably the scariest scene in the movie. The last time we see a snake man is when David has been fully transformed, only for him to die immediately. Yup, the next step in human evolution, the intelligence of the man and the deadly speed of the snake gets killed the minute he gets off the operating table. Now the director wanted David's death to be ambiguous, but no, it's obvious he's dead. Speaking of death, snakes are used to kill people in this movie, which also could have been a better alternative to the plot we got. Like, make the movie a mystery. People are dying by mysterious means even though they are healthy, and then it's discovered certain snake bites can cause symptoms similar to heart attack, which is something utilized in the film itself. But no, they go with the plot that they chose. And if that weren't enough, most of the film focuses on the scientific look at snakes. 
talking about how their venom can be used medicinally and how because some snakes are deadly, people assume that all snakes are deadly and how that is foolish. Sad thing is, I barely remember any of the scientific stuff about the snakes, save for the black mamba. And if you don't know that going in, you might be bored by the film. Another odd thing about this film, even though the film tries to shed a positive light on the snakes, there are several references to the serpent in Eden and the devil. So do you want us to like snakes or not? Also, the film boasts that all the snakes are real and that the actors were brave when interacting with the snakes. Yeah, the actors are so brave they get stunt doubles and rubber snakes. The deception is good at first until you realize that you never see the actors' faces when they're messing with the cobra. Plus, I highly doubt Mr. Martin let himself get bit by a real black mamba. But the film is not all bad. There are some nice shots here, and a couple of funny bits, like when the jock's girlfriend thinks she gave him a heart attack from having sex with him three times. And they expected us to take this film seriously. When the film was released, it received a mixed reviews. Howard Thompson of The New Yorker said, A surprise. Were it not for the lurid, starkly flapping windup, this would be recommended in toto as a gripping, quite imaginative hair curler. It is the only movie fiction I have ever seen that sustains a scholarly, informative attitude towards the world of snakes. This aspect is fascinating and chilling. As a gentle old venom researcher, Struther Martin putters around with cobras and pythons in a country lab. Kevin Thomas of the LA Times said, highly amusing and genuinely creepy, and praised the spectacular makeup. Granted, I am in league with the critics who lambasted this film. Keith Allain of the Monthly Film Bulletin wrote that an attractive streak of humor suggests in the early stages that Snake may turn into a macabre little thriller on the lines of the fly, and lamented that parody is eventually jettisoned in favor of portentous horror. The rather desperate and ludicrous plot is not made any smoother by Bernard L. Kowalski's direction which manages to be lumberingly predictable even in its borrowings. The Freaks-ish side show sequence, for example. Gene Siskel said, even after 40 years of improved film technology, the climactic scene in S fails to match the drama of that moment when Frankenstein's monster sits up on the table. And Donald Grisco from All Movie also gave the film a negative review, saying S fails because it emulates the film that inspired it all too closely. The story moves forward at a laboriously slow pace, and its threadbare plot makes it all too easy for the viewer to pick apart its plot holes and implausible elements. To make matters worse, the characterizations and dialogue never rise above the level of a subpar comic book, and the anticlimactic finale is likely to frustrate even the most patient viewer. So yeah, this film is too serious to be entertaining. But it does have one shining star, for it was the film debut of this man. Yep, Roll Fizzlebeef himself, Reb Brown, who I met by the way, and who recounted some behind the scenes stuff from this movie. But I'll refrain from telling this story as I feel Reb is the one who should tell it. Well, that's all for me. I'm the Cinema Fanatic. I'll see you next time.